We actually are about to start an interview that we're not going to be talking about in this episode. I don't even remember who we're talking about in this episode. Do you remember? It's, I'm having difficulty keeping up, to be honest with you. That's fine. We, we did a lot of interviews really fast. So, whatever happens after this point, it's all a surprise, folks. It's probably gonna even be to awesome, me. Though. I'm going to find out when I start this episode. We did not have one interview that was kind of like Matt. Like, they were all just sweetness. So, tell you what. I don't feel like opening a different session, so let's uh, let's use the guy who's actually about to be interviewed here. Okay. I just feel like it. Okay. Um, we're about to sit down with Alexander Shaw. Ooh, nice. Of the Classical Liberal Podcast. Very cool. This is going to be our, I think, our first non- Anarchist guest. But you know, it's interesting because I would have called myself a classical liberal not so many months Come ago. On, just say six months ago because that's like the rule. <laughs> right, yeah, six months. <laughs> What's the difference between a classical liberal and an anarchist? Yeah. Six months of reading. Yeah. Um, but, anyways, I, I, I have this guy on because he just sounds freaking interesting. And I'm super pumped to like. His show, it, it, I, I have. Those normal listening to statists talk moments, mm-hmm. but he's fucking entertaining, and oftentimes that part is the part that I think liber- libertarians and anarchists really fucking misses. At the end of the goddamn day, you better be entertaining to listen to. Absolutely. Um, I know I have a tendency to be dry, but well, dry or ridiculous. There's like there's a switch that flips. It's like a toggle. There's nothing in between. Really. Okay. Like Monty Python. Well, I've never heard this guy be dry. Well, there you go. So, um, let's get into this interview here. Nice. Well, I will get into football over Thanksgiving. Like that, my that was like the one thing. My mom actually was the football watcher in our family, and she would literally just turn on the football game every Thanksgiving, and we'd watch it, and we'd be like, "Yeah, go those guys! Yeah!" <laughs> every year. <laughs> I played for eight years. It's still I, like I, I could care less to ever watch football ever. <laughs> and oh. you actually understand how the game works. Like, if you're going to watch, watch college, because at least those guys still have something to prove. Uh, but a little more heart in it. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is, though. Mm. All right. So let's welcome Mr. AJ Shaw, according to his email. What do you go by? Do you go by Alex <laughs> Alexander? Alex. Yeah, Alex. <laughs> nice. All right. So, the the obligatory opening question: How did uh, how did you find your way to the Liberty Movement, and kind of where is your position in that right right now? Um. Well, yeah, guys, it's a weird story because uh, when I when I first started getting into politics, I was riding the train of, train of oh god, my ple- my president's black. You know, I was I was super excited. I didn't know shit about politics, but I certainly knew that my president was black, and he's he's going to do something for the black community. Um, and as I kind of grew up, and the 2012 came along, and and all that, uh, I kind of started li- uh, learning about the libertarian movement and just kind of getting in. But I didn't quite like libertarians because they were so rude mm. especially online they were so they were oh. so just on a on a moral high ground that you couldn't you couldn't say anything to them and even if they were wrong they still had jesus and all the lovely and cap spiritual guidance uh to lead them to uh you know, the, the new place of heaven so I, I i after that i kind of went to the republican party and i started working for them and running campaigns and i realized something really quickly actually uh, cause I was, uh, campaign managing for this guy in my town and I was like, you are no better than the Democrats across the fucking street. Mm-hmm. 2014, 2015 kind of era. I started drifting away from politics and one of my buddies, uh, Rimzo Martinez from the Rimzo Republic, uh, me and him went to military school together. We were really? both trying to become off. Yeah. No, we were Rimzo both trying is to become, a former uh, guest actually. Yeah, he is. Rimzo is, is awesome. He is one of my great friends and uh, one of the one of the many people I argue with on a daily and um, <laughs> he's also yeah, and I, entertaining for the record <laughs> so that, that explains a few things <laughs> yeah so me and him were kind of cut from the same tree and um, I listened to him and I remember calling him because uh, I heard uh, when I saw Gary Johnson running uh, for president I was like tell me who this Gary Johnson guy is he spent two hours on the phone yelling at me and telling me how, how dumb I was and I was like alright I'll go read 
And then I started falling in love with Liberty. And I actually got I got in by Gary Johnson, listening to him uh, and making fun of him and his Aleppo stuff and things like that. But, oh. you know, kind of got interested. And then Ron Paul started reading into him. And then uh, I kind of find Hobbes because I was in, I was finishing up my college degree. And uh, I found Hobbes Leviathan and I and I dove into that. And um, that rest of that was history, man. I was like, I'm hooked. This is it. This is for me. This is shit. I mean, you got, we got work to do. <laughs> nice. Let's see. He's, he's taken a lot longer than most people do to to get to where we are, but you know. <sighs> but he knows you know, both sides. Journey's the journey. <laughs> but one of my one of my good friends, though, uh, he's like he's a little bit older, way older than me. He's like he's like Alex. He's like he's like you're a classical liberal, but one day you're gonna become an anarchist. I'm like ah. I don't know, man. That's that's pretty far. I don't I don't know if I'm gonna do that. But he is sure, sure on the way of making me an anarchist. And to tell the truth, a lot of times I have a uh, Sherry Voluntary. She's one of my. We used to run a radio show together. She was the and last she interview the, we did actually. <laughs> <laughs> so you know she's all a, of our people. A, that's that's how it I is. I know everybody, man. Uh, yeah, she's she is a huge influencer for me because she I, I I argue with her. I used to we used to run this. Uh, radio radio show called speaking freely and um i argue with her all the time like she would yell and just burst into flames i'm like yeah you're done leave me alone but after her <laughs> yelling at me for like a year i kind of realized man on some of these things you're right and then she went off to her podcast and of course i tune in every week like an idiot and i'm learning stuff so i can't say that anarchist ideas are completely dumb it's just the ones that can work and the ones that uh that she's right on i i, I love and enjoy and um it's, it's just great. It's great to learn from people, anarchists at that. Like, there's a ton of anarchists who are just completely smart, like, really fucking smart. But, you know, the way they want to get things done is a little bit different from mine. <laughs> Let's talk about music a little bit. Okay. Ooh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, you want to start us off, Liz? Yeah. Okay. So, um, what kind of music do you listen to? What, what are you into? What do you dig? Do you have a genre oh. or just kind of. God, I am. I am a weird black man. I, I had a, <laughs> I had a fetish a long time ago for screamo in my uh, in my nice. college days. My so uh, dealing with suicide, uh, suicide silence, and Vanna. Uh, I even <laughs> shit man. Um, God, there's so there were so many He's that I enjoyed. Funny. You say that's a weird black man. That's not a weird black man. That's just you're in your. You grew up in the same era I did. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, and and believe it or not, I don't believe our race really get, or our generation cares about color all that much. I hung out with no, black. Like, no. we, that, that's the big well, thing. As long as the old people die off, it's not an issue anymore. But actually, I, it was uh, it was kind of weird. I went to a um, and it's not, it's not a Supremo band. I went to an Arctic Monkeys. Says, Arctic Monkeys. They're my. They're that's my, actually they're my a little. Group, that's yeah. a little weirder to be honest. <laughs> yeah. That that is that is my favorite band. I I've I've seen them four times. I, I drove down to uh, New Orleans uh, to you know sleep in my car, watch a concert, get really drunk, and go back and sleep in my car because I was too poor to, at the time to get a fucking hotel. I hear that. I had money Been there for the fucking show. Um, but uh, I went to one of their concert, one of their concerts, and one of the person that was talking to me, they were like, "Like, well, you like this kind of music?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> like I looked at, like, like, and it's weird because we're in this long ass line, you know, waiting to get into the freaking Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. And I'm like, yeah, I like this music. And I look around, I'm like, holy shit, I think I am the only black guy. <laughs> my, uh, here. Like, well, my, my, it's fun. But, but, but you say you think that's see to me. There's nothing that a black person can listen to that's weird, because my supervisor at my my day job for the past couple of years is a is a he. I mean, he's multiracial, but he is the biggest Barbara Streisand fan I've ever met in my fucking life. And, and I'm going to be honest, a, a 50-year-old black man listening to Barbara Streisand is about the strangest fucking thing you're ever going to see in your life. He's awesome. <laughs> I love that guy. I, lo I, I love my boss. He's a great guy. But, <laughs> but I'm, I, I look at him, I'm like, you are really not doing this correct, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> now, I also will say, though, I, I've been... Um, I've been diving like lately here, kind of like uh, maybe about for the past four or five months. I've been kind of getting that R R and B kind of smooth rap kind of songs, and not like mumble or that bullshit rap that you hear on the radio nowadays. Like, the kind of stuff like you don't find like No Name, uh, those kind of artists who are highly progressive. Like I mean, in their lyrics, you can uh, you can tell right? they're uh, very very progressive. Yeah. Uh, but the music and you know and and what they're trying to get to, you know, obviously lyrics and stuff is interpreted by the listener. Um, most of the time, at least. Uh, but and they're awesome. They're great. And like no name. And um, I listen. Uh, what was his name? Anderson Pack. I started listening to some of his music, which I didn't quite like at first. It took me a while to kind of get into it. Uh, Saba, another guy who uh, kind of plays this kind of jazzy funk music. So a lot of good guys 
and uh, gals that I've been paying attention to. I'm trying to go see their shows. Like I, I, I'm trying to go see Donald Glover, uh, his show next week uh, in Nashville, which is going to be great because he's still playing albums from uh, songs from Redbone and stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited for excited about that. Fancy. <laughs> I missed some of that because I'm trying to get rid of this background noise I'm having, and I, I did not do it the right way apparently. <laughs> what was after? What was after No Name? Oh, Saba. Uh, okay. We had um, Anderson Pack. Uh, been trying to see Donald Glover. Trying to see them. Oh God, I love Donald Glover. I love- I love Donald Glover. I I, 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 I don't know why, what about him. After I watched Atlanta, when he, then he won a, what do you want, an Emmy for that or something like that? I, yeah. I was like, oh my God, I love this man. At least he's thought provoking in his race baiting. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. Well, no, I, I first he, saw him. He in does like, do. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he does do that. No, I saw him in like, you know, sitcom shows. So, <laughs> you know, I still have a soft spot for the guy. But yeah, I know. He, he does the things. He does those things. Well, I mean, according to, to certain black women, I mean, he he's, you know, part of the problem since he, you know, married a white woman. <laughs> oh, God, this thing again. <laughs> I, I, did I, a, I did an episode about that, actually, really? talking about I'll have oh, to look it up. <laughs> it was bad, man. I was like, I, like it, was, it was a video from The Root. Yes. And she was talking about how bad, how bad it was. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you judging a man's character um, you know, for being black? <sighs> You know, because he married a white girl. Like, are, are you kidding me? Who cares? It's love. If you love somebody, love somebody, I dude. Mean, if, if, you, if you listen long, long enough to our show, like, I really do love the race conversation. Yeah, and I hate it, and I'm so sick of the whole black enough thing. It's just... Oh, God. I'm with you. Yeah. Oh, Well, terrible. and the point is, is that because literally my entire life is now what black people have gone through for most of their lives here in the U.S. <laughs> it's just, I... I'm... Uh, I'm officially oppressed. Like it's gotten to that point. Like, not as bad as the Asians are oppressed now. But <laughs> hey, man, listen, the Asians want to stay oppressed. They're living life like fucking. <laughs> right? like, yes. They, they, you don't see no fucking Asians out here fucking rallying. They're they're sitting around. Yeah, man, fuck it. Yeah, we're all oppressed, all right. <laughs> have have you been, well, have you been thousand dollars a week? Have you been following the the Harvard situation? Uh, I have not. What's what's the Harvard situation? Harvard, like in Harvard. As an Asian person, you literally have to do, like, you have to do, I think, like, an extra 6% better on your SATs to be considered. Like, basically, there it's reverse. Um, what's that, that thing there? Um, affirmative action? Yeah, reverse affirmative action on Asians at Harvard. <laughs> the policy, because, because they're overrepresented... D- to the proportion of population that they are because those people do good on the SATs. Right. They yeah. actually have to do better than good on the SATs. Like, literally, I think it's like 6% higher score to be at the same playing field as the as a white person. Wow. There you go. And and obviously, they, they bump up everybody else's scores because everyone else predominantly scores <laughs> below white people. Wow. Well... I don't know, black people don't have to worry about. It. We get that. We get in there without having having lower scores, yeah, so we don't, you, you, we don't have to worry about. They write it. those. They write those We're fancy good. essays about growing up in the hood. And- <laughs> I live in live in the hood. My mom not my mom by herself, and we live on government welfare checks. So, and I'm smart. Give me give me Here give me point. a degree. There you go. <laughs> um, okay, so we talked about your musical taste. How does how does music fit into your life? What do you what do you where where does, where does the music? Are you happen? a casual listener, an active listener? Or actually, uh, I, 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 when I go to the gym, I like to listen to music, uh, especially my little pump it up kind of, um, you know, emotional music that gets me through the day, makes me happy. But then again, I, I like to use music as a, a period to think because like usually in the mornings when I wake up, I'll, I'll turn on my, my little playlist I have here. And uh, most of it, is, it's just plain out jazz, you know, no singing, just a whole bunch of bands. I like, I like big brass bands. Nice. Um, just kind of just going in the background while I kind of get ready, get my day ready and, and stuff like that. And kind of just, it just mellows me out. Big I wouldn't say it's like bands. my dr- Yeah, man. Like I, I like, like I love big bands. I like big brass well, bands too. Those I, are my kind of well, thing. My, do you get into the, uh, what's that stuff I listen to and like a lot, Liz? Well, like, uh, Louis Prima? No, no, no. That genre. Um, well, like ragtime? No, no the the electronic version of all that. 
EDM? No, well, no, no, not EDM. That's that's the broad term for electronic music now. Um, there's a specific subset that is essentially it's like the combination of, in some cases, hot jazz oh, and big yeah, band music with m- like modern electronic like dance Caravan music. Palace. Yeah, Caravan Palace. Uh, what's that, that one? Um, Romanian electro girl. Electro like. swing. Yeah, electro swing. Electro swing. Oh, whoa. So like, is it kind of like a like techno kind of swing music? It is. It's, 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 it's horn sections with dance beats. Yeah, it's really okay. interesting. And it, it it's it's very trancey at times, but it's still got that like 1930s 40s feel to the music. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so much fun. Like, so no, Lance is not like that. Uh, what's what's that? Uh, that band? Ah, oh, was that? That makes a video. Uh, postmodern, oh, postmodern jukebox, jukebox, whatever. I know they're no, everywhere. no, no, no. They, they it's, it's oh god. No, I, I, I don't dislike postmodern jukebox, but it's, it's not them. Like that's taking modern music and making it old. This is kind of taking old music and making it modern. Oh, okay. Um, what I, I think that my my ent- entrance into the genre was Goldfish. And they're a South African band where, like, they, they play actual DJ sets, but the music mm-hmm. itself, like, they play live upright bass and saxophone and ragtime piano as part of their DJ mm. sets. I think the one guy's a flautist, too. Yeah, yeah. It's it's super interesting because, like, you, you, you know, you're watching these two dudes behind their keyboards and, like, the music's bumping. And all of a sudden, dude's like playing the upright bass behind the <laughs> behind the setup, <laughs> and then you see the other dude whip out his saxophone and he starts playing some stuff. It's it's fantastic. But if you're into, if you're if, if you're into that kind of music, I always recommend it because I mean I'm, I'm always up for trying things. And uh, you know what? That, that's one thing I found lately here. Uh, a lot of my friends, like when I take them with me to go to shows, they, they sit there, drink some beer, kind of look around, look on their phone. I'm like, dude, you're not even paying one bit of attention to the musicians on stage. Like, yeah. what are you like? What are you doing, man? Get off your phone. Like, and if if, man, if, you, if you like a show, Caravan Palace, look up their live videos because they like she, she, the girl who they're they're French. They're from Paris. And she, uh, like, she does, like, the whole, like, has a tap dance routine and some of their materials. And, like, it's just a big, big show. Just just a touch of vaudeville in there. Yeah. <laughs> All about that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ever a proselytizer of, of music. I never turn that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was listening. I was listening to your show. You guys had music in the background. I was like, "This is really, this is really great." Like as you guys go through the whole show, you have music playing. Like this is awesome. Well, like it's for uh. me. For me, it was always the idea of I wanted it to feel like a conver- like you're eavesdropping on somebody having a conversation at a party. Ah, like yeah. you're just listening to two people talk over the music that's just how i envision it because i like doing that when i was in college right yeah, see now that, now that you planted that in my head now i definitely hear it in my head i can definitely hear it because i did a lot of that in college <laughs> i'm just sitting there on my i'm sitting here on my phone looking down just listening it's like, oh, I, honestly listening. there's been a gonna, it's been a point of contention as to how loud the music in the background should be <laughs> since i got moved to the new network <laughs> <laughs> that kind of party um oh god and i just for the record if if all the music that is in the background if you go to the show notes there is a spotify link where you can go to see what all that is oh sweet i keep uh most Hmm. of it is all independent artists that i know personally and have okayed the music to be used in the background a lot of it is uh libertarian musicians some of it's just friends of mine a lot of it's just mine (laughs) okay so cool that's, um, that's that's more for the people listening than it is for you, but, but you were <laughs> it, seemed like an, it seemed like an apt point to proselytize myself. There you go. Go on, <laughs> as myself. There you go. Go on, <laughs> as myself.